Right, in problem number six of section 1.6.1, .1, we're going to use the various derivative tests that we've seen to actually sketch, sketch the, a graph of the function f of x equals 9x minus square root of x. Now, the first step we want to do is find the x and y intercepts. So to find the, x, the y intercept, let's just set y equals f of x equal to 0. And solve for x. Now, see this will imply that 9x square root of x. And then next we can square both sides. Which will give us 81x squared is, well, if it's even easier than that, we can just divide both sides by the square root of x. Um, so we end up with 9 times the square root of x um, equal to 1, which in turn gives the square root of x equals 1 over 9, or x equals 1 over 81. So when y equals 0, x equals, um, x equals 1 over 81. So we found our y-intercept. Now, or excuse me, the x-intercept. Now to find the y-intercept, we want to know, well, um, what's the value of f at 0? Well, when f is equal to 0, we have 9 times 0 minus square root of 0. We just have 0. So let's start sketching in the graph here. We know that at 0, our graph is going to go through the origin. And at the point uh, x equals 1 over 81, our, the y value is going to be 0. So let this be the point 1 over 81. And we know that this will go through 0. Now the next step is find the critical points of f. So first off, we take the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 9 minus 1 half. And this will be x to the minus 1 half. Or 9 minus 1 over 2 square root of x. Now for this to equal 0, we must have that 9 is equal to 1 over 2 square root x. Or solving for x, we find that x must equal 1 over 18 squared, which is, let's see, Three hundred twenty-four. So we find that the unique critical point of this function is one over three hundred twenty-four, which I'm not going to draw this to scale or it'd be really small. So I'm actually going to remove this point one over eighty-one over here a little bit, and I'll say that one over three hundred twenty-four is here. Now, the, when you're sketching a graph like this, it doesn't need to be exactly to scale. The main idea is we want to see where are the intercepts, uh, where is the function increasing and decreasing, and what are the intervals of concavity. So the next step is to figure out what are the intervals um, on which it's increasing and which it's decreasing. So again, we look at the derivative, which I just erased, but you'll recall that it's 9 minus 1 over 2 square root x. And we want to test it on each of these, each of these points, or on a sample point from each of the intervals, 0 to 1 over 324, and 1 over 324 to infinity. 
So the latter will probably be able to find an easier sample point. Let's just pick, say, x equals 1. So if we have uh, f prime of 1 is equal to 9 minus 1 over 2 times square root 1, or 9 minus 1 half, which is clearly positive. So f must be increasing on the interval 1 over 324 to infinity. Now, the next uh, interval, 0 to 1 over over 324 might be a little bit trickier, but I think we can still pick a fairly reasonable number. So let's try picking, say, 1 over 400. So now, 1 f of f prime of 1 over 400 is going to be 9 minus 1 over 2 times the square root of 400 which is the same thing as 1 over square root 400. This will be 9 minus 1 over 2 times the square root of 400 is 20. So now we have 9 minus 1 over 1 tenth which is 9 minus 10, neg or negative 1, less than 0. So f is decreasing on the interval 100, uh, decreasing on 1 over 320, or excuse me, negative infinity to uh, 1 over 324, but we're only looking at uh, when x is positive. So uh, f is decreasing on 1 over, or 0 to 1 over 324. Now we have uh, the intervals on which it's increasing, increasing and decreasing. Now it would probably be nice to know uh, exactly what values these were. So I mean, if we plug into our original function here, we can, well, we know that the function is increasing the entire way. So we, we know that we'll have over here f of 1 over 324. And over here, since the function is increasing, it must be greater. So a little bit higher up, we'll have f of 1 over 81. Again, if we're just sketching the graph, we don't need exact values. We just want to get a general idea of what the graph looks like. So the one remaining thing is to find out the intervals of concavity which we use by looking at the second derivative. So if f prime of x is 9 minus 1 over 2 square root x, or to make our computation a little bit easier, I'll write this 9 minus 1 half x to the minus 1 half. Then the second derivative will be equal to, well, the derivative of a constant is 0. Here we'll have minus 1 half, now power rule, so we bring down minus 1 half. And we lower the power, so minus 1 half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2. And we can simplify this a little bit by writing 1 fourth times 1 fourth over, uh, I'll just leave this 1 fourth times, or over x to the 3 over 2. So we want to know when is this equal to 0. And those are the points at which the concavity might change. Well, any value we stick in here that's greater than 0 is going to be positive. So we can see that uh, and it actually can't equal 0 at any point. Or I mean, the only variable we have is in the denominator. So f prime of x is actually greater than 0, well, strictly greater than 0. Um, 
for every x that's greater than or equal to 0. So what this says is that our graph is actually concave up at each point through um, at uh, each point on our graph. So again, we'll kind of adjust, as, adjust the sketch as we go along. It's going to be concave up and do something like this. So I'll adjust the point uh, f of 1 over 81 to match our sketch. So we can see uh, from our computations that the graph is strictly increasing and uh, on the interval um, 0 to infinity and it's concave up on the same interval.